Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Making an Impact with Zebu Nation. Today we have for you week 16, no, not week 16, game 16 of the 2019 Major League Soccer regular season. We are just about at the mid-season point. It's 34 games, that's 17 games. Anyway, we're just about to the mid-season point and we're holding on to that final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, we're in sixth place with 20 points after 15 games. So we got some work to do, but luckily we've mostly caught up with the rest of the league. I mean, everybody else is sitting at 22 or 23 points. Columbus is still out front of everyone with 28 points. Meanwhile, Sporting KC is first in the Western Conference. So... Earlier this week, we played, well, actually, I guess it was last week, we played Orlando City, and as expected, we got the 3-1 victory. We can go over here and take a look. You know, we had some pretty decent ratings. Our midfield played very well. Tader, Mane, Vargas all played very well. Our strikers, of course, Laren and Jackson Amell also played well. So let's take a look at the goals and see, see how we did. Orlando is not very good this season, so it wasn't unexpected that we beat them, but, you know, you got to put these teams away, and we put them away not too early, but, you know, in the first half. Here's Laren down the sideline, gets the ball to Jackson, wins the header. That's what we want to see this season. Get the ball to our strikers and let them do their business. Now, here we go. Just before the end of half, Tader to Piet, who got the start. Very rare start for him. Mane to Laren, and Laren just places a shot. I mean, that wasn't like a blistering shot or anything. Just perfect shot, I guess, out of reach. And then here we are, 84 minutes. We've been cruising on a 2-0 victory, and Laren pumps one to Vargas. He's made the save against, but Dupuy is there off the bench for a goal. Every time we put Dupuy in the game, he scores. So at this point, it's 3-0. And in the 88th minute, Orlando sort of gets gets one last goal to make themselves feel better. Boateng on a header in the back post. And that's it. 3-1. So, we're playing pretty good. If you look at our form, ever since the Canadian Championship where we beat up on uh, Toronto... We've been looking pretty good. We've won three of our last five. We're undefeated. In our last five games, so we're looking and feeling pretty good. Now, I finally went back and looked at my um, my videos from yesterday, and I noticed that the end of the Canadian Championship did get cut off. I forgot to unpause it after you know I started recording. So that video is going to be a little weird and a little choppy. But the other thing that got chopped out of that video, not just the end of the second leg, but also some roster moves we made. So we'll take a look real quick at the transfers, look at some roster moves we made, because the roster deadline passed during that week, and we did a couple of moves. First of all, we sent a few guys out on loan, Louis and Raheem Edwards. Sent both of those guys out on loan. You might have been wondering why you didn't see Raheem Edwards in the Canadian Championship second leg. It's because between the first and second leg, we sent him out on loan to Puerto Rico FC. We sent Louis to Orange County. And basically my philosophy here is I want to get as many of my 20-year-olds out on loan as possible so that they get that match experience and start improving by playing matches rather than sitting on the bench. So Edwards looking up a little bit, getting some more matches, and Louis also looking up a little bit, getting some more matches. So to fill out the squad, I decided to go into the under-20s, the Impact Academy, and bring up some 17-year-olds. Now the thing about 17-year-olds that I recently learned is they don't need game time to improve. They just need training to improve. So if we bring them up and train them with the first squad... We have slightly better training facilities with the first squad than at the academy. So, you know, they should start improving. So our first guy we brought up was Frederic Carrera. 
a 17-year-old left winger. He can play all over the midfield. He can even play defensive midfielder, center mid, left mid, or left wing. So he's a versatile dude for us. He's only one and a half star currently, but he's three and a half star potential. So he's one of our higher potential guys at the academy. Good pace and speed. Good teamwork, work rate. His mentals are sort of okay. Technicals, he's a little lagging. Only seven techniques. Only seven technique, ten first touch. So he needs a lot of training help when it comes to technicals, and hopefully he can get that with the first team. Then we brought up our number one top prospect, Gregory Chevalier. Take a look at this guy. Very good. 17 years old again, central defender. He can play a little bit of right back, but he's mostly a pure central defender six foot three so he's got good height he's got good strength pace jumping reach balance all this stuff he's lacking a little bit of stamina and fitness but you know that's okay for a central defender mentally he's very strong positioning determination decisions bravery 19 bravery and then technically he's okay tackling is okay heading is okay he's very far behind in marking so we got him training heavily on marking hopefully he can improve that and hopefully he can get some time we played him in the Canadian championship and he actually played pretty well so you know we got some definite high hopes for Chevalier and then the last guy we brought in Erwin Mendy right winger 18 years old not a lot of potential for this guy but I wanted to bring him up and bring him in just, you know, to give us a little bit more balance in terms of number of wingers that we have on the squad. And also, I was hoping he could improve. I mean, you never know. He's got a third dark star. He could possibly improve. You never know. But this is just a short-term, temporary, fill-out-the-squad type of guy at the moment. But he's very fast, 16 pace, very fit. So, you know, he's got something physically to build on. He's you know, got decent determination, very good flair and teamwork. But again, technically is where he's lacking. He does have technique, so that's good. Hopefully, he can learn some stuff and improve um, at his time in the first team. But the other thing I wanted to mention about these three guys is that all three of these guys are playing in our under-20s. And recently, just a couple of months ago, these guys won the North American under 20s championship look at this they beat team USA 1-0 in the final so they've already got a little hardware this is like you know a second generation of really good Canadian players coming up through the academies not just our academies but the other academies in Canada so I'm really excited about this especially you know I have my eye on maybe taking over team Canada in the next couple of years you know, next time there's an availability there as a coach, I want to I wanna take over and maybe see if I can get these youngsters to a World Cup. The other thing that's going on here for the Canadian, Canadian under-20s is they are currently playing in the under-20s World Cup, Group D. And as you can see, we got a lot of players here. Let's uh, take a look. So we got two players from our Impact Academy are there, Miracle and a guy I didn't even realize, but we have a guy with the greatest name in all of North American football, which is Paco Grande, 17-year-old central defender. He's a jovial character, young center back, 13 heading, 14 marking, 10 tacklings. Pretty good for a 17-year-old. So we're going to keep our eye on old Paco Grande as well. Um, Maracal, the other guy from our academy, 17-year-old winger. Another winger, another decent guy, guy with decent speed, teamwork, decent crossing. Uh, and then we have several players from our Montreal Impact team on there. Montero, the goalkeeper. Carrera, Mendy, Jan Franco Vasquez, our 17-year-old finisher. He's not a striker, he's a finisher. 17 finishing is pretty outrageous. And look at him, he's improving day by day as well. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on with our uh, 
our youngsters, and uh, you know they're looking pretty good. They are right now. Um, they haven't started Group D competition yet. They just beat Cuba under twenties three nil. See if any of our boys played. Marikal got in there, six point nine rating. Mm -mm -mm. Anybody else? There's Chevalier got in there as a substitute, seven point four rating. So, you know, our guys are contributing and looking. The future is bright, basically. So let's. I guess get to d today's game. I don't think there's anything else we should or would want to look at. Tactic-wise, we've been going back to old form number two recently. Just, you know, it's felt right. Now, today's schedule, we've got an away game versus Atlanta United. And I don't know that I really want to play form two. Yeah, we got a lot of tired boys out there. I think we might go back to the 4123 DM. And normally I don't you know normally I do all this stuff off camera. Um yeah, so let's pause it here and I'll set up the lineup and then we'll come back. All right, just a second. I'll I'll try to remember to unpause it as well. Okay. We're back and we set up the old 4123 DM wide. So let's go back to the inbox. Let's hand that over to the assistant coach and get a move on. Atlanta United playing away. You know, we've been playing well with the 4-2-4, but that's been at home against some lesser teams. So we've been, you know, sort of smashing them offensively. I don't know that we want to do that versus Atlanta United. I think we're okay playing a little bit more defensive. Bring that defensive midfielder in and, you know, play a little bit conservatively because it hasn't worked earlier in the season I mean just trying to go all out all the time led to some pretty brutal defeats so we're gonna try to save our goal differential a little bit and uh, you know just try not to concede too many versus Atlanta but honestly Atlanta isn't the threat that they were earlier in the save you know when they first joined the league they were killing everybody now they're down in 10th place they're battling it out with toronto fc for like sort of most disappointing that's no good they are six to four favorites though they're on an inconsistent streak currently we're on a strong streak so that's looking good we've got several injured players four players we also have four players away on international duty they have a few players out on international duty. Darlington Nagby is out. That's good for us. We're missing Boxall, of course. Romero, Petrasso. Andre is out as well. We're not going to play him. Not going to risk his injury. So we got, you know, another thin squad going on here. Um, on the bench, we got Jackson Amell, Mane, Hassler, Watts, Tran, and Salmon. So not a very strong bench bench currently we've got several guys lacking match sharpness so it's another thing you know when the schedule starts getting packed again we start having to rely on our reserves and hopefully they can play better than they had been now Atlanta still has a strong team they got Guzan and goal Louis who won defensive player of the year last year Escobar is their captain they got Delgado McCann in the midfield Al Milrone is still there Vialba um, McInerney, we saw him last year. He, uh, you know, he put it on us in the Eastern Conference playoffs. And then they got Bunbury back from injury. <clears throat> I think he was injured for them last year. Maybe they picked him up. Yeah. Yep, they got him in a trade last year. He was injured when he played against us. But he did play 25 games, got 12 goals. He's already got two goals this season. So we got to watch out. Meanwhile, our lineup. We got Lutweiler in goal. Giglio and Duvern at fullbacks. Taylor and Cabrera at central defense. So pretty standard defense. Nasco getting another start at defensive midfielder. Toure, Pace getting a start in the midfield. That's sort of scary. I mean, he's a good player, but 
Uh, it's not really who we want in midfield. Vargas and Mancosu getting another start. Got to watch his numbers. We don't want him getting too many starts. And then Dupuy getting a start at striker. Every time we put him in at striker, he scores goals. So hopefully he does that again today. Um, let's see. We owe Atlanta United for what happened last time. We sure do. Set opposition instructions. Winfred gives us good advice. We're going to close down on Bunbury. McInerney as well. Um, definitely tightly mark the Alba. I guess we'll tightly mark McInerney as well. Doesn't look like their fullbacks are getting forward. Looks sort of the opposite, in fact. So we'll leave them be for the time. And let's go. How much is Barco? Let's just send the assistant. All right. Let's go. Uh, look at this empty stadium here. What has happened to Atlanta United? Some fickle, fickle fans there in Atlanta. This is not how it should be. They've been packing them in. In real MLS, 60,000 every game. So we're not looking so good right now. Get that interception. Nope, Delgado with the shot. Nobody's going to track it down, so it's going to go out of touch. And does that end the first highlight? Yes. All right, what, what sort of highlights are we on here? We are on extended. All right, that's good. Four minutes in. Let's go. Corner by Garza. Atlanta United in the reds, by the way. Headed out by Taylor. Vargas tries to track it down. Cannot. Vialba. Vialba gets a shot off wide. See, we are in the away whites, just uh, to make sure. So everybody's on the same page here. Another throw in for Atlanta. They seem to be getting all the highlights. Almiron centers to Delgado. Forward to Vialba. Wow, what a rocket shot. Lutweiler got a hand on it, but he couldn't deflect it out of goal. It was too too powerful. And Atlanta goes up 1-0. Let's see this again. Just a, you know, easy centering pass. And then Delgado just, I don't know, Vialba just turned and shot it. Not much you can do about that one. <clears throat> well, so much for our defensive strategy, right? Out of the window. All right. Let's see if we can get some highlights. No, we have getting no highlights. Anderson to Almiron. The Alba. Back to Almiron. All right. That was a wayward cross there. Lutweiler gathers it in. Uh, what are we going to do here to generate some highlights? I mean, we can drop back and counterattack. I don't know if that's the best thing in the world against Atlanta. You know, they are a pretty good counterattacking team themselves. So it is good to play a little conservative against them. But if we let them do this all day, that is equally not as good. So what do we have here? We got standard. All right, let's go counterattacking. Let's get stuck in. Let's try some more direct passing. You know, we might start getting some uh, yellow cards here in the first half, but we can always dial it back. Now instead of uh, corner kicks... Oh, McInerney get, got a slight injury. But now instead of uh, throw-ins, they're getting free kicks. Here's Vialba taking it way wide. He gets tackled. Going to get another throw-in, though. Speaking of throw-ins. So, yeah, they just flashed up that McInerney is injured, and he is indeed injured. Our getting stuck in might have something to do with that. Potential thigh injury. Okay, okay, okay. Time is racing by now. <clears throat> so I guess that's good. We've... Plugged the hole. Now we got to start bailing water here. Get to halftime. Here's Vargas with a free kick. He got it on goal. Good man. Forced Guzan to make a stop. I mean, it wasn't the most dangerous kick you ever saw, but any free kick that lands on target, I'm happy with. 
37 minutes and counting, 38, 39. Time is flying past, 40, just about to halftime. Almiron is looking very tired. McInerney, uh, like I said, is injured. We're looking nice and healthy. Giglio's not looking too hot. Duvern's not looking too hot. Mancosu and Vargas. So nobody down the wings is playing very well. Duvern gets a yellow card. So we're going to have to tell him to ease off the tackles maybe. All right. Halftime. Not so good. All right. Tactically, let's change our team instructions. Let's... Not get stuck in anymore. Let's go back to sort of regular style. Counter, I guess. I can't say it worked, but it stopped them from getting highlights. It just didn't really give us any highlights. So there we go. We'll make those tactical changes and go to the dressing room. Pep talk. Let's be assertive. Show me something else. Let's go. So, you know, if we don't generate anything, we'll probably take out a midfielder and add a striker and go 4 2 4. Here's Mancosu down the sideline. Can't win it, but Dupuis is there. Dupuis in the first highlight. He gets fouled right away by Perez. Let's go. Free kick. Toure is going to take it. Be so good for him to get a free kick goal right here. Come on, man. Earn your millions. Yo! Off the crossbar. That was crazy. Almost. He almost earned his millions. Cabrera settles it down. All right. So that's a good first highlight. We got a foul. We got a free kick that hit the uh, hit the post. Clanked off the uh, iron, the woodwork, as they call it. Are they wood anymore? I don't think they're wood anymore. I think they're like aluminum, but whatever. Um, Delgado almost turns it over. Vargas can't get to it. Atlanta retains possession. McCann gets it forward to Bunbury. He's dispossessed. Deverne with that yellow card. Mancosu. He bombs it forward. Dupuis on the run. The big man rumbling downfield. Oh, what a pass across to Vargas. Is Vargas going to just score? My man, just score. You don't need to worry about passing it back. Just chip the goalkeeper. Get him going the wrong direction and flip it back. Outstanding. Mancosu starts the break. Dupuis using uh, what little speed he has. He pushes the defense out of the way. Great pass to Vargas, and then Vargas, just a beautiful shot. Beats Brad Guzan, the uh, USA goalkeeper. He's not easy to beat. There we go, tie it up. Counterattack works. What can I tell you? You know, um, I heard some people complaining that counterattack doesn't work very well in uh, FM18, but I guess it can in stretches. Maybe not as a 100% philosophy. You know, I'm just going to play counterattack every game. It's worked so far. Almiron is going to need a substitution. Hackenierney is probably going to need a substitution. What sort of injury does he have? Oh, yeah, thigh injury. All right, um... Might want to get Duvern out of there with that yellow card. We're going to bring Salmon in. Taylor's not playing too well, but he's not playing too bad either. Pace is on a 6.4. Mancosu's on a 6.3, but he's looking motivated. Um, I think we might bring Hassler in. For pace. Put him central midfield attack. So we got a central midfielder going forward. And see what he can do. Louis out. That's interesting. All right, here's Atlanta United. Highlight. The Alba has it. 
to Robinson down the sideline tr gets it to Escobar crosses it McInerney oof. he just beat Salmon our substitute that we put in there that's no good that was definitely a substitution goal because he wouldn't have beat Duvern like that. Duvern is too big. But look at Salmon. He did, Salmon didn't even go for the ball. So you can't really blame him being short on that. It's not like Mc, McInerney is some huge dude. He is five foot eight, eight jumping reach. So, I mean, if Salmon had gone for that ball, he probably would have won it. But he didn't go for it, so that's a no good. All right, all right, new. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to switch it up. We're gonna have to go four four two on these Brohims. So there we go, four four two attack. Um, I'm going to move Mancosu up to striker. I guess that's going to be Yaya Toure in the midfield. Play him at Regista. Why not? Sure. Just run around, do whatever it is a Regista does. And then we're going to make our final substitute bring in Mane on the right-hand side. Burst of speed on the right-hand side. Uh, we'll put him on attack. Put Vargas support. Sangilio forward. So we're just going to get everybody going forward as much as we can. Um, Taylor is not a ball-playing defender. Much as I'm sure he would love to be, he is not. So let's go. All right. They got two yellow cards and an injury. Almiron finally comes off. They get brought in another injured player, Oliveira. All right, we've made our sub now. Mane is in... And let's go. 75, 76, 77 minutes. Not a lot happening. Let's push forward. Close down all over the field. Giglio gets a yellow card. It's to be expected. Uh, hello? Something? 78 minutes and counting. I'd love a highlight. Something, something. Let's demand more. 84 minutes. We're getting down to crunch time here. 85, 86. Nothing is happening. Here we go. Salmon with a throw in. Far side. Gets it up to Mancosu. Mancosu sends it to Dupuy. Wins a header to nobody in particular. And... Atlanta starts to counterattack. Bunbury looking around for support. That was a terrible pass. Hassler to Mane. He's on the run. He's in open space. He's got two men heading towards the goal. Sends it to Dupuy. Mane did not put Dupuy in a good position there. He should have waited a couple of steps and then launched it up so the big man could head it. But anyway, at least we got a highlight out of that. Five minutes of stoppage time. Um, let's go. Something. Uh, here's a highlight for Atlanta. Free kick. Drops it off to Vialba. Vialba looking around, looking for help. Garza. Back to Vialba, who is wide open in the middle of the field. Bunbury. It's another highlight. 45 seconds to go. Vialba to Delgado. We need a turnover here, boys. 
We need something. Closing in on 30 seconds. Oliveira with his injury to McCann. Gets it forward. Bunbury on the run. That's probably going to be it. They're going to get a corner out of this. This will probably be the... Oh, the ref just checked his watch. Garza sends it in. Bunbury takes it out of the box. And there's time. Okay. All right, so 2-1 defeat on the road at Atlanta United. Not so good. I mean, it's they're still a pretty good team, but they've just had bad luck, I guess, this season. And once again, we had to play a heavily rotated side because of all the fixtures, and once again, we lose. Um, unlucky, boys. Unlucky. Get out of here. Yeah, so that was no good. All right, schedule-wise, Philadelphia Union. I think our schedule is still, well, it might ease up a little bit. So we got a full week of no games. Still have five players on international duty. But we got Philadelphia and then a week off. Okay, so that's good. That will help us get everybody rested, everybody regular. Regular? Regular? What does that mean? I don't know. Everybody rested. Everybody rejuvenated. Although we do have a lot of players on international duty coming up. Um, I don't know if some sort of World Cup or qualifying or something is coming up. But anyway. Um, normally I would schedule a friendly in here to get some people some game time. But I think we're okay on game time. Honestly. I think the rest will actually do us more than a, uh, a friendly would. And also, with all these players on international duty, there's no reason to stress the lineup even more. So I guess we'll come back for the Philadelphia game, and then things should ease up again with our schedule until the next round of the Canadian Championships, which... Um, isn't until August. So I think we'll be okay until then. No problems. All right. So we're going to end it here because I'm running out of things to say. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.